Hola muchachos, my name is Elena and I'm an expat living and working in Barcelona, Spain. Those of you who want to visit the city can spend weeks and months exploring the city and finding the most beautiful sites. That's why I designed especially for you a tour that is going to cover the main spots and attractions are going to include some food and coffee. And today we are exploring a neighborhood called Ciutadella. This is the old town of Barcelona and it includes three districts. First of all, Raval. Second one is El Barrio Gotico, and the third one is Born. Let's go! But before I start showing you the tour and exploring the city, I feel like I need to make a disclaimer. There is a lot of robbery and thievery happening in the city, especially in the old town. There are a couple of simple rules that I would really advise you to follow to escape those situations. First of all is do not travel in the old city center alone. Uh, by being alone, you are a very easy target for pickpockets and robbers. Always travel in a group, especially if there are some bigger people in your group. Try not to flash your items like your phone or your camera too much. Uh, keep them always in your sight. If that's a backpack, put it in front of you. If that's one of those bum bags, put it again in front of you. If it's a bag, crossbody. There are some situations, however, when you will want to film, take photos and so on, and then you again become an easy target for the thieves. In this situation, I would advise you to do all the filming and taking photos early in the morning. This is the time when the thieves are not as active. I hope you are safe here and you are taking all the precautions. And on this, let's start the tour. El Raval neighborhood. This is one of the three districts in the old town, Ciutadella. And this was where historically the people in Barcelona lived. El Raval had, unfortunately, a reputation of being somewhat dangerous, uh, not the cleanest of the neighborhoods. You lived in a more dirty area like this, and you have different stores on the first floors. It is pretty wide, but I would say like a bit more dirty uh, compared to the other neighborhoods, even in the old town. We lived here for a whole month and I would say that some of the things are true. It is a bit dirty and a bit dangerous, but I would not avoid coming here or living here altogether. So let's go see the first symbol of Raval. Here is our beautiful sculpture El Gat de Botero or they also call it El Gat de Raval. It is a very impressive sculpture made of metal and it's long and it's bulky. It reminds me of the cat from Alice in Wonderland. I know that a lot of people who are thinking about Gaudi's architecture are thinking Gracia neighborhood, they're thinking Eschampla, but they don't know that one of the houses is actually located here. This is a house commissioned by Guay, the same person who commissioned the park, and it's pretty much overlooked. So if you want to get an in-depth Gaudi tour, I recommend you visit this place. It has been closed for a while now, but I see that there are people going in, so probably it's going to be open when you visit next time. We are now on the most commercial street and the most touristic street in Barcelona. It's called La Rambla. It's probably the most visited by tourists because here you have lots of shops and restaurants. Although my advice would be to avoid eating here or shopping here because the prices are exaggerated, number one. Number two, it's not the safest. There are so many tourists here and lots of pickpockets. But on the positive side, it is really a beautiful street. You can just stroll here. I don't remember whom, but somebody of the Spanish poets said that Rambla is the street that they wouldn't want to ever end. They would want it to go forever. So that's the sentiment. One of the places that I really enjoy off La Rambla is Plaza Real. Plaza Real is a square filled with restaurants, cafes and different small shops. So if you want to make a quick stop for a coffee or maybe for an ice cream, this is the ideal place. A big plus, it's so much more beautiful than La Rambla, I think, and it's much less commercial and touristic. Today is Saturday and you can see there are a lot of people, but nowhere near as many people as on La Rambla. So come here and just enjoy the view.
La Boqueria is a traditional, very touristic market, but it doesn't make it less appealing. You can buy everything from fruits to vegetables, fish, meat, you name it. But not all of you knew that actually in Spanish market, you can eat inside of the market. And that is exactly what we are going to do. It makes for a very colorful lunch, brunch, uh, breakfast, you name it. We are actually aiming to go to La El Quim de la Boqueria, which is an exceptional place. We had baby squeeze there and it was just gorgeous. However, they are closed for vacation, so we didn't make it there. I really recommend this place. If you come here, go there, uh, order the squeeze, they're exceptional. Uh, instead, we went to a Bar Central. Bar Central is kind of your regular place. Still um, full of color from the market, but um, you know, just like regular food. So it was, it was okay. Twenty-seven euros for a sangria, patatas bravas, and the baby squid. Obviously, Gothic Quarter is super popular with tourists. There are always plenty of people here. Not only tourists, but during the summer, it's full of young people who come here to party, to enjoy the multiple stores, shops, bars, restaurants, cafes. And then they can sleep until late because Gothic Quarter gets so much shade. It's so dark, even the day, that you can sleep until noon or even later, and it's super dark in your apartment. But one of the drawbacks of this is that if you wash your clothes and you hang them on the you know, drying racks, they're gonna dry super slow. So the humidity here is pretty high. All over Barcelona, there are these water fountains, which is an amazing solution if you don't want to be always buying water, which I think is really wasteful. So you come, you pull up the other way. No, no, you'll move grasso. Take number two, and this time is gonna work. It's a good money saving tip. I'll let you in on a secret. Never drink coffee from the traditional places like the Bokiria market, amazing food, but the coffee is pretty bad. Go to dedicated coffee shops and they will have the level of coffee that you deserve. We came here to uh, Satan's coffee shop. It sounds very scary by the name, but they actually make really good coffee. It doesn't mean that they don't, they don't have an attitude, they do. No Wi-Fi, no decaf, no bullshit. So I ordered a cappuccino to go and you can definitely drink it here if you want to, but my recommendation would be to take it with you to a special place and enjoy it outside. I'll show you where in a second. Okay, I found the spot. This should be good. Look around. This is the Cathedral of Barcelona. It was the grandest church that Barcelona has seen before Sagrada Familia. If you want to go inside, it's seven euros, but I prefer just looking at it on the outside because we already visited so many beautiful churches. I don't feel like going in this one too. Although if you are a lover of churches, definitely it's not such a big fee. You can afford it. Let's just sip it in for a while. Are you ready? The coffee was drank, the cathedral was admired, and it's time to cross yet another iconic street in Barcelona. This time it's Via Laetana, it's the street that divides the Gothic Quarter from El Borne, where we are going. You can see right there in the distance the Santa Caterina market. We're gonna go there, but not right now because we have an art object to visit. What a beautiful face. And where's the nose? I think the eye went waywards. I'm gonna 
share a secret with you. If you're a casual art lover like I am, don't make this museum your priority. It mostly exhibits Picasso's early work and the work of his family, not the work that he became famous for as a painter. If you want to see that, not in this museum. It's also pretty small. We covered all the exhibits in like 40 minutes and that what you see behind me is the brightest as more, more beautiful work. So if you have the time and the money, definitely come. It's a good experience, but nothing out of the ordinary. We are in Santa Caterina market. Let's see what we can find for a late lunch. Like a typical market, it opens up until 4 p.m., also closed on Sunday, so don't make the mistake of coming here during Sunday. But there are still some stores open selling food, and that's what we're gonna do. the famous bar of Santa Caterina Market, Bar Juan. You can see how big the lines are at 2 p.m. They are closing very soon. That's crazy. I can even imagine how long you have to wait to get a seat. So we are going to look for a less fancy place, less popular, or maybe just grab some sandwiches and go to our next destination. Places are popular, you don't always get a seat. Let's roll with that. We ended up in Starbucks with three sandwiches and two drinks. We have some tuna, some bacon sandwiches, a smoothie, a kombucha. So that is the lunch for us. Our next very quick stop is going to be Santa Maria del Mar. This is the biggest basilica in the quarter of Bourne. I'm sure if you've been traveling for a while, you know how a Gothic church looks from inside. The most beautiful way of admiring it is from the outside. There are plenty of cafes around. You can grab a cola, a coffee, a drink, just sit and admire from the outside. If you love history, don't hesitate to visit the Bourne Market. It was a full-fledged functioning market until they found ruins of the old city in the basement of the market. They closed the market and they made the place open to everybody. It is a beautiful construction, so you can see the ruins of the old city, and it's absolutely free. If you want to learn about the history of Barcelona more in depth, they have paid exhibitions, but this is totally optional. It's almost the sunset, you guys. It's been an amazing day, and what an awesome way to finish this day by going to the Citadella Park. This is a park beloved by locals. If you come here, you just get immersed in the culture and the Spanish way of being. Even if you just want to, you know, uh, drink some water or drink some beer and soak in the sun, it is just awesome. It's an amazing park. And later, after we visit everything here, we are going to head out for dinner. In the evening, we wanted to have a local experience, so we headed to Bodega La Palma, which is hidden in the heart of the Gothic Quarter. It's a great place for tapas, which by now you've probably heard are those small things that Spanish people eat all the time. The bodega was opened in 1909, and hey, they have been serving food since, so they know a thing or two about this. The dish that they are famous for is actually patatas bravas, and in all honesty, this is the best potatoes that I've tasted during the last two months in Barcelona. I would highly recommend you get them.
The other two dishes that we got and I liked are smoked codfish and truffle brandade, this is a spread, and croquettes with squid. Everything together uh, with three glasses of wine was a bit over 40 euros. Hey guys, this is Elena. I hope you enjoy this video. In between filming, researching, preparing it for YouTube and editing, it takes sometimes 20 hours or so to edit a video like this. So if you enjoyed it, please like it and comment what was your most favorite part. And if you enjoy content like this, please be sure to subscribe. This is definitely the best reward for a content creator like me. Thank you so much again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!